Hey YouTube, welcome back. Glock Chef here. I hope that we haven't disappointed you all by taking our little break. We had to get some content figured out for season two. Now that we're back, over the course of the next several episodes, I intend to talk about the difference in grip between a semi-automatic and a revolver. I intend to talk about how to choose between a revolver and a semi-automatic. I intend to cover other topics such as which caliber is best for personal protection, in my opinion, which admittedly has been done and done and done to death, but I want to give you my take on it. I'm also going to cover, at some point, firearms for uh, personal protection and uh, preparedness for a natural disaster, man-made disaster, ecological disaster, etc. In addition to that, I want to talk about ways to carry your firearm in a scenario that might be different than your everyday carry. I want to talk about the virtues of carrying ammunition in your car versus not, and other general firearms topics. So for today, we're going to start off with something that has been discussed several times, but is still a concept that needs covered because not too many instructors are teaching this with the popularity of semi-automatics today and that is the way to properly grip a revolver. As many of you are familiar, there are two methods that are currently being taught for the gripping of a semi-automatic handgun. For today's purposes, I will be utilizing my Glock 19 Gen 4. As you can see, my slide is locked back, my magazine well is empty, and if you can look closely there, there's nothing in my chamber. It is important to demonstrate to my audience that the firearm is unloaded for the sake of safety. Now, the two grips that are commonly taught for a semi-automatic firearm are the thumbs up grip, which was taught until a little while ago by several instructors in the FBI Academy, police departments, several private firearms courses, and the National Rifle Association. This is also similar to the grip used for revolvers. Recently, many firearms instructors have been again adapting a thumbs forward grip on a semi-automatic handgun. Thumbs forward, arms locked out. As you can see, both thumbs rest forward on the firearm. And this is to gain a better balance of the firearm. I myself personally shoot my firearm in this method. I find it to be comfortable, I find it to be accurate, and I find it to be easy to revert to under speed. Now, lock my slide back. Once again, demonstrating an unloaded firearm. And once again, demonstrating that there is nothing in the chamber. I'm going to set this to the side. A revolver is different than a semi-automatic. A thumbs forward grip is not practical for a revolver. This belonged to my grandfather. It is my most valuable and prized possession. Now, monetarily, I have several guns that are worth more than this, but this was my grandfather's personal handgun, and this means more to me than anything else that I have in my collection or in my possession. I would sell my house before I would sell this gun. Again, for safety shake, I'm going to show you that my cylinder is empty. I realize that some of you may say, well, he's pointing the barrel at the camera. Well, don't worry. There's no one behind the camera and I do have a ballistic stopper in place. So as you can see, chamber is empty. Firearm is safe. Now, a thumbs forward grip on a revolver can result in a grip like this, which is perfectly fine. However, on a snub nose revolver, that grip may push your thumb out past the cylinder. See that? What's gonna happen when the firearm discharges, if you can see, there's actually a gap between the cylinder and the breech. So there's going to be gas that comes out in that gap. That gas 
when it comes out, if your thumb is up here when you're shooting, it's going to burn your thumb. There are several people who still use revolvers in self-defense and still teach revolver classes. And they all swear that this grip is the right way to do it. Thumb tucked in on the right hand. See there? Left thumb or non-dominant thumb tucked on top of the dominant thumb. You're going to squeeze the same amount of pressure with both hands, about 60 to 75% pressure. When you release the firearm, you should see an indentation of the grip in your right hand or your dominant hand. That's how tight you should be gripping it for security. When you punch out and extend, you punch out and extend in the same way that you would if you were punching out for a semi-auto. Tuck your head in, lean forward. Now, with a revolver, having your thumb back here not only ensures that your thumb will be nowhere near the business end of the chamber where gases can come out, it also allows for easy access to cock the hammer and turn your double action revolver into a single action revolver. Now, that being said, I have cocked my revolver. What is the safe method to decock this revolver? Obviously, I'm going to have to pull the trigger. Remember, we have already verified that this is an unloaded firearm. So in theory, I could just pull the trigger and let it fall on the empty cylinder. However, as we all know, there are proponents out there that will say that dry firing the pistol in this manner can cause harm to the firing pin. Some people still debate this. Some people say that this isn't true. I'm not here to argue that. But what I am going to do is show you the safe way to decock a revolver. Take the thumb of your non-dominant hand and place it in between the hammer and the firing pin. Take your trigger finger, pull the trigger. Then, using your dominant thumb and your non-dominant thumb, slowly release the hammer. You keep this thumb in the way, so that way you don't slip the hammer forward and cause a negligent discharge. You use this to ease the hammer forward, so that way if you pull this hand out too fast, you don't drop the hammer and have a negligent discharge. Remember, when it comes to firearm safety, Two is one, one is none, and none is dead. So, I have now shown you the proper method to grip a revolver and to decock a revolver. Now I'm going to show you the proper method to reload a revolver. You're going to start out in your firing position. I've just fired my sixth shot. I'm going to take my non-dominant hand. I'm going to take these two fingers and I'm going to place them here on the cylinder. I'm going to utilize my cylinder release on the right hand side, pop the cylinder through, and turn the firearm like this. So that way I have the cylinder properly gripped between my thumb and my two middle fingers. I'm then going to take my dominant hand, slide down firmly on the extractor rod, I'm going to take my firearm, invert it in this method, and I'm going to drop my individual shells or my speed loader in. Once I do that, I resume a firing grip, come back up with the revolver, close my cylinder, ratchet in place, and come back up into my firing grip. Now, that being said, a lot of you have seen on action movies where the action hero just flips his revolver and slams the cylinder home. You don't want to do that. It can cause massive damage to your firearm, especially this part here called the crane. The crane is the method that allows the cylinder to rotate. See how it rotates in there? If you just slam your cylinder strut, you can damage that. You can also damage this piece here on your extractor rod you can also damage the internal components of your revolver as seen here. So there are three surfaces that are very badly damaged from 
overuse of the flip and close technique. It looks cool, but let's leave it for the movies, okay? Now, you have been properly shown how to hold, unload, reload, and decock a double action revolver. That's all I have for tonight. I wanted to make sure that I illustrated the differences between the semi-auto grips and the revolver grip. And I wanted to make sure that you left tonight fully understanding how to properly grip a revolver. That thumping sound that you might have just heard would be my Malinois, Zena. Zena, you want to come say hi to everybody? Come here. Come on. Come on. Everybody, this is Zena. She is my two-year-old Belgian Malinois German Shepherd mix. She's full of life, full of energy, and she runs me ragged, but I do love her. Scout is currently lying in Zena's crate as we speak. So that's where our mascots are for the channel. If you like our uh, content and you find us informational, please like and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell for a notification when new posts come online. Thank you all for coming. This is Glock Chef. I'll see you next week.